Matthews here, creator of the Revitalization Blueprint, optimization and accountability coach for some of the world's leading entrepreneurs. Calorie counters. They're everywhere. They're on your phone, they're on your wrist, you've got Fitbits, Apple Watches, Garmin's, Tom Toms, whatever it is you use to track your steps, track your calories. Are they actually making you fat? Are they stopping you from reaching your goals? Are they impacting your focus, your productivity, your energy, your lives in a negative way? If used right, these can be some of the most amazing items that you hold in your arsenal to get into your goals. When it comes to health optimization, when it comes to simply being accountable, because I may be one of the world's best accountability coaches, but having this around your wrist telling you you need to stand every single hour for two, three, four, five minutes, or however long you set it, is going to be a lot better than me just saying, get up, you lazy sod. But they can be detrimental. Here's how. You see, there's a strength workout option here. You click strength, it tells you your calories you burn. Every single person is an individual. There are some rough guidelines. When you put in your weight, your age, your sex, it doesn't take into account your health history. How is it going to tell you exactly how many calories you've burnt? Some things like the watch will tell you how many active calories over calories which you would have burnt just sitting down doing nothing. And then it adds them up together at the end of the day. Some watches will just tell you a total calories. Not taking into account the ones that you've already burnt doing nothing. So you think you've added more calories burnt doing exercise. So what happens? You end up, you end up overcompensating when it comes to eating more. It may tell you you've burnt 2,000 calories. That's cool because the strength workout has told you you've squatted and burnt 2,000 calories. There are very few apparatus that can actually track calories very accurately during strength workouts. It's not as simple as your heart rate goes up, you're burning more calories. It's not as simple as your heart rate goes up, you're in an aerobic burning zone. You burn calories afterwards. In fact, you burn very few calories whilst actually weight training, 60, 70, 80 calories maybe, depending on the intensity, depending on the duration. It's very stop-start. When they come to aerobic activity, maybe they are tracking a bit more accurately. But they don't take into account necessarily that if you do the same hours run, the same hours ride, and it tells you you burn 500 calories, your body is going to adapt to that. Over time, that heart rate is going to be better and better, and the calories are going to go down lower. It's going to become more efficient at burning calories. We want the body to be inefficient. So how can you actually adapt to your adaptation of your calorie counter? Simple matter of consistency. Track what you eat, track how you move, and adjust these based on the outcome of where you want to be. Has your weight gone up? Has your weight gone down? Has your strength gone up? Has your strength gone down? I focus a lot more on health than just the numbers on the scale. So do you feel more focused? Are you sleeping better? Is your skin better? Is your hair better? Have you got less brain fog? All these things are going to make a difference. Rather than just a number on a calorie tracker, a number on the scales, and a number that no one else sees. It's about consistency over time. Consistent consistency gets consistent results. So when you come to your tracker, use it. It's a beneficial aid to help you to see how hard you've worked. To see some basic levels of health. But don't rely on it. It's not going to be 100% accurate all the time. Be aware of that.